Hi, this is Doug Schneider. Welcome back to Real Hi-Fi. In a previous episode, I promised to talk more about how waveguides work. This is that episode. To discuss this topic, I've brought in the Paradigm Founder Series 100F loudspeaker, which has a nice big waveguide implemented for the precise reasons I'm going to describe. But I'm not going to get into the physics of how they work or too much into the details on shape and that sort of thing. Instead, I'm going to tell you the two main reasons designers implement waveguides. Reason number one, it allows the driver to play louder without having to deliver it more power. In other words, it acoustically amplifies the output of the driver, and this is not insignificant. And the reason it's significant is to increase the output of a driver just 3 dB, you need a doubling of amplifier power. 3 dB again, another doubling. So if you go up 6 dB, that's quadruple the amplifier power. And a waveguide of this size, depending on the frequency, provides way more than 3 dB of increased output for the tweeter it's surrounding. So you're delivering less power to the tweeter, which can mean that you can use a lower powered amplifier, but more importantly, less power usually means lower distortion. The other reason has to do with directivity, which is a very complex topic, and I've discussed it in other videos, but let me give you kind of the short version of it. Depending on the frequencies the drivers are producing, they narrow their dispersion as frequency increases. So in the case of a mid-range driver, it's dispersing widely at the bottom of its range. In other words, projecting sound over a very broad area. But as the frequency increases, it's narrowing its dispersion. It's starting to beam. Same with the tweeter. It's projecting very narrowly at the top of the range, but very widely at the bottom. Now, here's the key. That waveguide, when it's mounted around a tweeter, then controls the dispersion of the tweeter better for a better match with the mid-range unit. If it weren't there, what you often see, depending where the drivers are crossed over, is an on-axis response that looks normal, but as you get off-axis, when the drivers are changing their dispersion characteristics, you see this weird effect where the mid-range or mid-range base driver is very widely dispersing at the bottom of its range, then it's narrowing, then the tweeter comes in and it gets very wide again, and then it gets narrow again. And this off-axis, on-axis disparity causes a problem with what we hear. So when you look at a speaker like this one, it's no coincidence that the waveguide is roughly the same size as the mid-range driver. It's controlling the tweeter's output at the bottom of its range so that it can't disperse that wide, that it better matches the dispersion of the mid-range at the top of its range. And when you look at the on and off axis measurements, you don't get this dissimilarity between the on axis and then the off axis being all wonky. They're similar. And that is important for a proper tonal balance in your room. But one thing you do have to realize is that the waveguide has to be designed well, or you can fix problems and cause problems. And I want to give you an example. So we all intuitively know how a waveguide works because what do we do when we want to speak louder at a distance? We cup our hands around our mouth. It projects the sound more forward. Basically, we're horn loading our mouth. And when you put a megaphone in front, you get to speak really loud. That's effectively what's happening. It's amplifying your voice because it's projecting it more in one direction. However, you can get a tonal balance mismatch if you don't cup your hands correctly. You can make your voice sound very unnatural and you don't want that in a loudspeaker. So to design a good waveguide, designers have to go to great pains to design it so that it increases the output, controls the directivity, but doesn't introduce tonal balance aberrations. You want everything to sound natural. And when you get that right, the benefits are there. So I hope that gave you a little bit of understanding about why a waveguide is there. If you have any questions, though, put them in the comments below. I check them regularly and will answer. Thank you for watching.